Psycho-Cybernetics, Chapter 14 Welcome to Rethink Your Perspectives blog. This blog is dedicated to finding, sharing and discussing a variety of topics around the struggles our clients and audience go through. Each episode we discuss a key concept that many humans struggle with and give you a variety of perspectives for you to see the concept through so you can find one that makes it feel easier to deal with. We hope you get some benefit from these blog posts and we would love to hear your thoughts. Don't hesitate to like, share and comment at links. This instalment features a book which was first suggested to me in several of the Thinking into Results lessons created by Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher at the Proctor Gallagher Institute, as well as in many of the live calls, mentoring sessions and other videos I have been watching during my journey, and is one that I highly recommend on all of my own live sessions. As an aside, Thinking into Results is a life-altering program that opens your mind to the limitless possibilities you have within you. Using 12 lessons ranging from adjusting your self-image through leadership qualities and practice, to the Knowing Doing Gap, this program is designed and proven to change your life in every way in your relationships, finances, careers, well-being and many other areas of your life. Get in touch if you want to know more about it. Psycho-Cybernetics is a truly revolutionary book. Considering it was first published in 1960, it is astounding to me that it has not become a key text in schools around the world, as the information contained within would make every single human a better and more productive person not only for the good of our species, but for them as individuals as well. The book is available in most good bookshops, online and in person, and I highly recommend you get yourself a copy if my write-ups resonate with you. I hope they do the book justice, but they are only small snippets. Stay tuned for one more review of this book as I repopulate and update these blog posts, which were originally written in 2022. My version of the book has space for reflection on each of the chapters, so I have included my thoughts at the bottom of each of the chapter summaries. Chapter 14. How to get that winning feeling. Chapter 14 of Psycho-Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz is all about how to get that winning feeling. Imagine feeling confident, happy and successful. That's the winning feeling we all want to have. In this chapter, Maltz explains that our thoughts and beliefs shape how we feel about ourselves and our abilities. If we think positively and believe in ourselves, we can achieve great things. But if we doubt ourselves or focus on negative thoughts, it can hold us back. Your automatic creative mechanism is teleological. It operates in terms of goals and end results. Once you give it a goal to achieve, it supplies the means whereby. Better than you ever could consciously. You must supply the definite, well-defined goal, thinking in terms of a present possibility. Worry about the future. But instead of negative potential outcomes, worry about positive potential outcomes. Remember, your mind cannot tell the difference between real and imagined. Bring up memories of the winning feeling and use them for your success going forward. Setting your machinery for success. To set your creative mechanism for, for success, simply call up, capture and evoke a feeling of success. This can be any success you've ever experienced, any situation where you have felt that winning feeling and can rekindle those feelings of success again. If you feel successful and self-confident, then you will act it. Experience the winning feeling and you will set the tone of success. Your actions create the reaction from the universe and you will create success. Picture your goal. Feel how you will feel when you reach it and capture that feeling. Use that captured feeling whenever negative feelings arise. It's not about the winning, it's about how you feel when you are winning. The law of vibration and attraction states that you can only attract what is in harmony with you. Winning creates a positive vibration, so you will attract more positive to you by harnessing that winning feeling. As described in a previous post, your vibration and actions are created by your feelings, which are dictated by what you are thinking. Think about that previous win, feel that winning feeling. Your subconscious doesn't know it's imagined, but it will respond accordingly and put you in a winter, into a winning vibration. How science explains the winning feeling. Electronic servo mechanisms use stored data to remember successful actions from trial and error, and then repeat them. We store successful patterns in conscious memory as well as in our tissues and nerves. This can explain the saying, I had a feeling in my bones, because our body can perform the action without any conscious effort from us. Billions of neurons with numerous axons, feelers or extension wires make up the human cortex. These form synapses, electrical connections, between the neurons. The brain sets up a new pattern of neurons, a chain, whenever we learn something. 
Each individual neuron can be a part of many chains. You can repeat previous successful actions with minimal conscious effort by triggering the action consciously. This also recreates the winning feeling either for real or if you think about the original situation. You can even use previous events to evoke winning actions by remembering a winning feeling. Gradualness is the secret to the winning feeling. To have winning feelings to call upon and fuel a challenging situation, we must first build up successes. We have to acquire the habit of success by reliving previous successes. These successes don't have to be relevant to your current challenge, but by reliving them you give yourself a boost of confidence. Maltz uses weightlifters as an example. They start with weights they know they can lift, and then gradually increase over time. If they were to start on the bigger weights and fail to lift them, they would feel like failures. But starting with weights they can lift builds up a feeling of success that they can call upon when they get to the big ones. The same can be said for teaching children in schools. If children are given tasks that are too hard at first, they will feel useless and give up. But if they start with simpler problems, they build up a feeling of success that can help support them when they reach the harder problems. When you reach a plateau in your performance, this approach also applies. If you will reach a point where you're not able to go any further, it can help to drop back a little and then build up again over time. Positive and constructive worry. Don't force, coerce, use effort or willpower to bring about your desired convictions. Just do what you do when you worry. But instead of worrying about a potentially negative outcome, worry about your positive goal and the desired outcome. Think about it constantly. Get emotionally involved with it. Use gradualness to build up the absolute faith in your desired success. The same with a negative worry. You aren't hit with the overpowering strong feelings from the get-go. They build over time as you focus on the worrying thing more and more. Just suppose such and such a thing could happen. Play with it until it becomes a possibility. It could happen. Then it becomes mental imagery. As it becomes more real in your imagination, appropriate feelings will manifest. This leads to faith and belief that your desired outcome will happen. Accept negative feelings as a challenge. Use negative feelings to boost your resolve and fuel the winning feeling. React aggressively and positively. Feelings cannot be controlled by willpower, but feelings can be wooed. You can dispel bad feelings by creating a new feeling, substituting it for a positive feeling. Feeling follows imagery. You can choose which images you play back in your mind, so choose positive ones that create that winning feeling. You can rewrite old neuron patterns. Your current mood can update neuron chains and patterns when you replay them. You can rewrite past traumas in a more positive light. Behaviour patterns are altered by adding new neurons and connections to the chain, or by using the individual neurons elsewhere in other chains. Chains can also be strengthened by replaying them more often. Even if it's just in your imagination. There is no benefit in blame. Your past explains how you got to where you are now, but it's up to you where you go next. You can choose to keep playing the same music or to change the record. Change your mental imagery and your feelings about previous experiences will take care of themselves. How to integrate this chapter into your own life. Here are some tips to help you integrate the lessons from chapter 14 into your daily life. Number one, positive affirmations. Start your day by saying positive things about yourself. For example, I am smart. I am capable. I am a winner. Repeat these affirmations throughout the day to boost your confidence. Two, visualization. Close your eyes and imagine yourself achieving your goals. Picture yourself winning a race, acing a test or scoring a goal. This can help you feel more confident and motivated to succeed. 3. Celebrate small wins. Acknowledge and celebrate your achievements, no matter how small they may seem. This will help you build confidence and reinforce that winning feeling. 4. Surround yourself with positivity. Spend time with people who uplift and support you. Avoid negative influences that make you doubt yourself. Positive energy is contagious. Number five, practice gratitude. Take a moment each day to think about what you are grateful for. This can shift your focus from what you lack to what you have, boosting your mood and confidence. Remember, getting that winning feeling is all about believing in yourself, staying positive and celebrating your successes. By incorporating these tips into your daily routine, you can cultivate a winning mindset that will help you achieve your goals and dreams. The copy of the book I have has spaces after each chapter to write and reflect on an experience from your past that is explained by the principles given in the chapter. This is what came up for me. Take a step back to go forward. 
I have found it very powerful to remember old successes and how I can succeed when I fail at something. These memories help me to have another go, enabling me to approach the new situation with more confidence based on previous successes. I have never actually failed at anything, because I have never given up. I have completed everything I have started that I remember. You only fail when you quit. I guess I was an unconscious competent in this regard. I have used the technique of reliving previous successes to boost current situations, but I have never realised what I was doing until now. Everyone has something that they want at. You learned to walk, didn't you? Learn to talk, to write, to keep yourself alive. What do you think? Want more information or help with your terror barrier? Please contact me to see how I can help you start remembering and drawing power from your previous wins. Drop me a comment to let me know your thoughts. I look forward to hearing from you. Jay, rethink your perspective. P.S. Have you heard about the upcoming Science of Getting Rich Summit? June 2024? It might be worth you having a look. Links are in the comments.